Have you ever watched a rocket take off into the atmosphere? Think about the combustion and the power and the fire and the force and the float and the fact that it blasts off into the sky and you're never gonna see it again. Sprinters are doing that here on Earth. These athletes brush up against the true limits of human motion. You will never move that fast if you're not one of them, <laughs> ever. And I just think we should be amazed at someone who wants to make that their challenge. It's running as fast as humanly possible. Sing new indoor PR. This is the science of sprinting with Shanti Jackson. My name is Kate Baird, and I'm a clinical exercise physiologist at HSS, and I'm the coordinator of running and metabolic services. So I do a lot of cool things. Shanti Jackson, S H A W N T I. Last name, too. I think Shanti's definitely a Ferrari. Her dad was a world class athlete. Her mom was a collegiate track and field athlete. Sean Batman Jackson is my father, the best pointer hurdler in the world to me. That's where I get it from. Just in terms of her physical talent, she is an engine, this performance elite machine. I just think of myself as a regular 18 year old. Because you can't think of yourself any other way. Jesus. High school national record holder in the 50, 55, 60, 100, and 300. U20 world champion, two time Pan American champion. And last year she ran the 11th fastest 100 meter race in the world. Hey. I feel really comfortable. I love the 100. I feel like it's my event, even though I love the 200. The 100 is where I need to be. The 100 meter sprint is basically just enough time to hit your max velocity. The 100 is more technical. Like, you have to be technically sound. Everything has to be on point and fluent. Everything has to flow into each other. And then just push like hell out of it. There we go. We spend quite a bit of time on start and initial acceleration and teaching her how to be consistent in her block. She's in position. There's that moment of quiet and then bam. In that first moment, her primary focus is producing as much horizontal force as she can, as fast and as powerfully as possible. So this is all about force. Yes. If you're still, your body doesn't want to move. You have to act on it, and you have to be stronger than the weight of your stillness. Every single muscle in her body is being used. Her posterior chain, glutes, her hamstring, her calves, they're gonna help to create that initial action. Her pelvis is sort of on this long angle. She's aerodynamic. She's cutting the air. She can't stay that way too long because she won't be able to increase her stride frequency. I'll make sure I come up. That transition has to happen as quickly as possible without fumbling. Make sure my body is at a good posture up. Having good alignment is key. My hand, make sure my hands are open. Have the tendency of closing my hands. Her arms are gonna have to swing. We're contralateral beings. So when our left leg steps forward, our right arm swings forward. Our musculature is set up to work in that sling. There's no room for error there. Any little movement will make you slower. Overshadowing, butt kicking, all cute. Any lapses in alignment, any deviation is potentially a breaking force. Just mean less force, and less force means less speed, and less speed means you don't win. So that's why there's no room for error. Now that my transition's over, focusing on myself, I shut everything off. I make sure it's just me, myself, and the track. At this point, that gate cycle is everything there's this like vertical moment. As soon as her foot hits the ground, that's that force production moment and she is sliding the ground behind her as hard as she can and then quickly rebounding that leg. Make sure my feet are up under me. Make sure I'm grabbing, extending. That foot is propelling her forward. It's moving behind her center of mass to go into this amazing hip extension moment where her body soars through the air into double flow. She needs an incredible amount of power. She needs an incredible amount of mobility. Time in the air is still, that's slowing you down. Yeah, absolutely. 
So, which is why you don't want to be <laughs> you don't want right. to be in either place very long. <laughs> she has her foot in the air. She doesn't want it in the air. She has her foot on the ground. She doesn't want it. On the ground. Yeah, she's basically as close to flying as it gets. You ever like go to sleep and wake up and you know you had a dream, but you don't know what the dream was? That's exactly how it is. When I'm having a good race, I don't remember what I'm thinking about. Like you just hear your breathing. Every single contraction costs energy, carbohydrates, glucose, glycogen. It places an incredible oxygen demand on her body. It's like nearly five liters of oxygen. That is an incredible amount of oxygen. Hold five liters of soda in your hand. In this scenario, we end up in a little bit of an energy deficit because we can't pull in oxygen that quickly. And so if you've ever seen a sprinter finish, the first thing they do is go, <gasps> right? Because they're repaying that debt. As soon as I get close to the line, look at the camera, and I uh, lean. Decelerate slowly. Turn around, look at the track, visualize what I just did. Look at the time, hopefully it's fast. That's it. Different athletes will excel at different parts of the 100 meter race, but really, you just gotta be faster, earlier, and hold on to it in order to win. These are the limits of human motion. And in reality, in the way that we even study sprinting, it's totally different than how we study other sports because there's so much about it, I think, that has to do with the individual. And that's why she's so amazing. What it takes to be one of the greatest is to do things people aren't willing to do. I hate pain, but I'm not afraid to go through the pain comes with sport. Throwing up comes with sport. Everything just comes with it. I signed up for it. We are just kind of scratching the surface here. This is all more or less just natural ability from Shanti. I'm thinking of Paris because I need to really be on it. I need to cross my T's and dot my I's, make sure everything's perfect because you only get one shot. In 1988, Flojo ran 10.49. So in all the years I've been alive, no one has run faster than that. I don't know how much faster we're gonna get. If anyone can do it, it's certainly Shanti. I'm willing to do the impossible to be the best I can be. 57 wins. The sky is the limit. Yes.